Well, hey, everybody, this is Eric Walter with Your Next Step Leadership Coaching, and I'm here with my friend, Rebecca Sharp. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Hey, I'm so glad that you could join us today because the, the purpose for our conversation today is I want to talk about why creating an environment is important for leaders. Um, I feel like as leaders, sometimes we miss this and we miss the importance of creating, maybe it's an office environment, home and, but you know, all those types of environments that are important that we work in. And so I'm just so glad because you're great at this. Oh, well, thanks for having me. This is, yeah, this is my cup of tea right here. Awesome. Okay. So Rebecca, what does it mean to create environment to you? Well, to me, whether, whether you realize it or not, wherever you go, that environment influences you. And I think that we have reactions to the space that we're in. And again, I think sometimes you don't even realize it. So to me, if you're creating an environment, you want to make it comfortable and inviting so that it can facilitate interactions for people. And it has the potential to shape um, people's experiences and wherever they are. You said just a minute ago that it that it creates reactions in us. Can you give an example maybe of some of those reactions that you're talking about? Yes, I think that, you know, well, first of all, there's a lot of like scientific evidence that proves like even in hospital rooms, whatever your environment that people are looking at can trigger certain reactions. It can reduce stress. I mean, even like blood pressure and all kinds of things, which is why you see like aquariums and plants and yes. things like that, you know, and like in doctor's offices and <laughs> hospitals, many people That's feel a great example. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. But I think that that is underestimated. Um, how like what kind of reaction people actually have to specific spaces that mm -hmm. that they're taking in all around them and it can influence you yeah okay so why do you feel like creating the right environment if you're a leader maybe for yourself for your team uh you know wh why do you feel like it's important for leaders well i think that if if you're a leader and you're trying to influence people and you care about the interactions and where they are and what they're thinking. You, I think you can have all the best intentions at whatever information you're trying to deliver to them or how you're trying to lead them. But if you underestimate what can distract them um, or affect their mood, then I think you're missing, you're missing the boat. Like for a teacher, for a classroom, for example, I think that teachers can strategically set their classrooms up so that it creates an environment that would encourage exploring ideas or mm -hmm. materials and that can impact their learning. And you see it in an office, you know, you want like a fun, mm -hmm. cheerful, um, inspiring light, bright, lots of natural light to reduce stress. And if people are happier and their mood is better, um, they're just more motivated to work. And so then you've got more productivity. So mm -hmm. I think that, that a lot of those in a church environment, it's the same you know, what you're, what the messages you're trying to deliver to them. If they're, if people walk into a place and they're distracted or they don't feel comfortable or welcome or at ease, then it, those are just roadblocks all along the way, whatever you're trying to achieve. I love that. What would you say to people who would say, you know, I'm not worried about the environment. I don't, I just don't think that's important. That's more of a peripheral type of thing. What would you say to someone who thinks that? I think they're underestimating the impact that it has on people and mm -hmm. their moods. And I think that, um, you know, you just, you're, you're not going to have, I mean, the work environment is obvious, but either in, in other environments, um, even if it's like a wedding or something or, mm. you know, an event that, that somebody's coming to, if somebody walks in and they're cold or they're hot or it smells weird and you know, you and I've talked before about the five senses and engaging those five senses because that can deter somebody and then immediately they're distracted. They've got a roadblock up. They are not open to hear the material, you know, that you're, you're trying to get them to listen to because their mood has been altered or, you know, whatever versus you walk into uh, a room that has a lot of bright light or it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, furniture placement is huge too, to facilitate conversations and interactions with people. You know, if that's, if that's not done 
correctly, then yeah. you're not, you're not achieving what, you know, what your goal is. So I think people, I think it's underestimated, honestly. I love that. So um, just in as, as an example for you personally, like um, take, take maybe your foyer or maybe your den that you created for your family and kind of give us an example, like in your mind of, you know, you want your family to have a great experience in that particular room. So what are you paying attention to as you set up that room? Well, that was kind of live and learn for me because for a <laughs> while I would set things up just how I liked it and what, what I thought that was pretty. And so if I was buying furniture or something, you know, I would pick just what I liked without thinking, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's that comfortable. <laughs> like, it's fine. And I, I made the mistake with dining chairs one time. So I had a long dining room table. I mean, it was set beautifully, you know, it was a nice table, nice chairs, but they were not comfortable. And so you... I would go to the effort of setting the table and cooking a meal and inviting people over and the chairs weren't comfortable. And so people didn't want to linger around the table because they were uncomfortable. Because they were up. uncomfortable in the yeah, chair. Yeah, they were like yeah. ready to get up and go. And <laughs> same thing like in, in the living room with, with like our family, you know, we have kids and a dog and all that. So you have to think, I mean, it does have to be practical too. And you do have to set it up you know, we ended up going with specific furniture to accommodate large groups of people because there are already five of us. So if we have anybody over, you know, those numbers go up. And, and, and again, if I had, you know, at one point I had two little love seats and it was beautiful, but four people could sit on the left and they were right next to each other. And, you know, so it yeah. didn't, it didn't, it was not an open environment where people yeah. could have conversations with each other. Yeah. So That's that was kind awesome. of a live and learn process for me. So, so when did you notice your family appreciated your ability to create environment? Oh, that hasn't happened yet. No. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I love no. it. That's awesome. For my husband, he definitely does. The kids, you know, <laughs> kids are still totally over their head. Other than my teenage daughter, awesome. you know, her room is set up to where uh, for a while she didn't have anywhere else for anybody to sit. So if people would come over, they would just sit on her bed. And so, you know, we had to add a little area with a chair and a table mm -hmm. so that, you know, she could have more people in there. But um, I think that my kids, you know, just by having like their playrooms and room space in their room to play and all of that, you know, kind of works for them. But my husband and I both like to entertain. So we have now bought houses that are set up for entertaining. You know, we think about that you know, as, yeah. as we plan all of that and with furniture placement and things like that. So it does just, it allows us to open our home to people and entertain and the flow, you know, people, people realize and recognize stuff like that. And they want, they want to stay, which can be good or bad. Cause we have people yeah, right. over all the time. We can't get them to leave. <laughs> we don't want you to stay. <laughs> yeah. I don't need that are... banner that's like, you know, a uh, party, welcome, whatever, leave by nine. Party. Right. <laughs> Where are those uncomfortable chairs when, uh, when we, yeah, that's it? right. Pull them back out. That's exactly right. <laughs> so it, it sounds like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as you are creating an environment, you're concerned about how people are going to feel in that environment. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And I had to, you know, I had to learn that too, because I worked, I've always liked decorating and planning parties and all of that. But again, I just kind of did what I liked and I didn't realize the environment that I was creating, how that was going to make people feel. I just did it based off of how I was going to feel or what I liked to look mm -hmm. at or whatever. And I worked for an interior designer for a long time and we did, she was a um, showroom designer for a large mm -hmm. furniture company. And so we would set up hundreds of vignettes for both markets. Wow. And I mean, you're talking about new walls, floors. I mean, you, it would be a totally different vignette every, every market. And of course that was to sell the product of the furniture. And so, you know, you, you're doing specific styles for that furniture to appeal to, to that client and make them walk in and have it feel like home or remind them home, or maybe they want their home to feel like that. You know, it was all very, very strategically um, designed and placed to sell that product. Wow. Um, but we also did home staging for real estate, which was also just very eye opening and mm. the smallest things that you can do that people don't even know when they're walking in, they don't realize that they're having that feeling by yeah. seeing something in small things like, you know, you always hear 
bake fresh cookies. You know, people are coming right. to look at your house or, you know, what it's a that sense of smell, right? It yes, goes back because to the it smells like home or, you know, a lot of like, you'll see a lot of plants. And again, that's back to that soothing and calming nature kind of type feel. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of plants and artificial or real are always mm -hmm. used, but also light, you know, natural light. And of course in a showroom, natural light is not an option. It's all artificial light, but it's yeah. very strategically done to still where you, you don't want the dark, low ceiling mm -hmm. kind of feel. But, but anyway, so through, through the showrooms and the home staging, and we also did some um, wedding and event planning. And it was very much like, okay, what do we want? First of all, of course, the bride and groom, that goes without saying, but the guests to feel, well, you, of course, you want it to be yeah, um, energetic and cheerful and celebratory. You want it to have maybe a little bit of a feel of a romance. So you're totally setting that stage for everybody before they even walk in. Like you wouldn't walk into a wedding and it's like everything's black and like, right. you know, the music's real somber. Like, I mean, you right. know, that would not yeah. be yeah. setting that up appropriately for the experience yeah. that you want people to have. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so Let's just say that somebody who's in, in, in some sort of leadership role right now is listening to this and, and they are beginning to think through, okay, how could I even start with my office that I work in? You know, what mm. could I do to make this more of a productive and enjoyable environment for me? What, what's some, maybe some quick thoughts that you would say, pay attention to this, 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 or something like that. Well, make it look like your background right now. <laughs> you're good to go. You've got the light right? and the plants. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> no, but I mean, there are some things you can't control, especially, especially in an office, you know, if the ceilings are low, if the light maybe isn't that, if there's not a lot of natural light, I mean, there's some things that are just are not, I mean, unavoidable, but there's still a lot that you can do again with light. Like think about light bulbs that you're using. You know, you want certain kind of light to be brighter. And now of course with all led bulbs and everything that's possible or is a lot easier than it used to be. Mm -hmm. But again, like set it up, set your office up to where it helps you be productive. Like everything needs to be you know, where, where it works for you and close contact so that you can kind of get in a routine because mm -hmm. if things are messy or unorganized and then it just adds to it. And then, you know, you can easily get distracted and you're just not as productive. And yeah. then same thing back, back to like the plants and the light. I mean, that is also to help reduce stress and yeah. to, you know, boost your mood a little bit and motivate you to work. Absolutely. And there, there seems to be a relationship between our productivity mm -hmm. and, and, and the environment in which we work in and if we enjoy it or not. Right. But like if you're dreading going into a particular room or a particular mm -hmm. office, yeah. it, it just, it, 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 it's always going on in the back of your mind, right? Yeah. Like I really don't enjoy this room and it's, and you may be stressed and not even know it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it's back to those five senses again. If you walk in and it's, you know, I've been in offices before that are like musky and, yeah. you know, like maybe old carpet and it's immediate, yeah. like it might be like kind of muggy or hot, right. you know, it's, yeah. it's or it could work the other way too and be like freezing cold and feel right. like a sterile environment. But, yeah. um, you know, all of those things, paint colors too make a huge difference. I mean, you know, you want, if it's, if it's dark and all of that can, is just, yeah, it totally affects your mood and, and the, therefore right. your productivity. So I'm hearing you say lots of natural light, mm -hmm. some, some lighter colors mm -hmm. uh, on the wall, maybe some plants that, that have some, that show life, right? And, yep. and things like that. Less yeah. clutter. Yes, yes. Definitely. <laughs> less clutter. Yes, definitely <laughs> not, less clutter. Find a place for your sticky notes, not yeah. on your desk, right? Yeah, you know, exactly. Right? And also too, you know, for customers that are coming in, if you're if you're in a work environment where customers are coming in, mm. that tells them too what where your priorities are a little yeah. bit, and and it just doesn't feel it can be off putting to them too, you know. So. Absolutely. That, mm -hmm. That's a great example. When, when your clients or customers walk into your space, do mm -hmm. they feel like you're organized, mm -hmm. you're prepared, that you thought of them? And all of these things that you're describing show that we are concerned about how people feel. And I think that makes an impression. Don't you think so? 
coaching people or and you're bringing people in i mean yeah for sure i mean and, you, and i don't i don't think people realize it themselves so it's almost like you got to take a step back and walk in with the filter on of the five senses and pay attention to even if it doesn't bother you if you're used to it Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it, then get somebody else who's got, who's got like yeah. an eye or a knack for that because, yeah. because it really makes a difference. So when you walk into a room, what do you notice first? Probably light, mm. light, light ceilings, just that, that initial reaction of, do I feel, you know, cramped or do I feel like I can breathe? You know, if mm -hmm. it's light and bright and airy again, it just would put me in a better mood. Smell is big for me too. Like yeah. If I walk into somewhere that smells weird or if the temperature is not right, I mean, that, yeah. that you know, like certain stores, yeah. I'm sure you have a restaurant, yeah. so you don't want to go because it's like it's freezing or right. and noise too. I mean, the, the hearing sense is big, um, especially in office. I think they say like a moderate, low to moderate noise is good for mm -hmm. office, apparently, you know, not too much to distract you, but not too quiet to where you get yourself distracted. But right. um, yeah, so all of those. That is so true. I have found myself to be more productive as I'm listening to, I found me some YouTube stations with more am, like, like ambient, uh -huh. like music, just kind of yeah. having in the background because mm -hmm. it seems to kind of carry me mentally uh, yeah. through my work. And I've found that there's some, it helps me be more productive. Mm -hmm. It and does. And it with um, restaurants, they should think about that. Hospitals think about that stores. Um, I mean, that's huge. You walk into a store and if the music is loud and distract, it reminds me of Abercrombie and Fitch, but I'm also getting old, but like, you know, you walk in there and it's like, <laughs> like the music and you know, I mean, sure you might be appealing to your market of, yeah. you know, younger teen or teenagers and young adults, but yeah. the parents that are spending the money, you know, you're like, you can't get out of there fast enough. Cause it's right. Yeah, right I just myself probably but you know that does make <laughs> that does make a difference to think about yeah. that if you're trying to sell a product i mean the last thing you want to do is distract the person that you're trying yeah. to get and safety too is another thing you know that i think mm -hmm. people think about that's really important is do they feel safe in that environment and yeah. you know that that comes into play too i love it I, what what you're describing when your environment looks like it's prepared and planned mm -hmm. it it to me, it communicates to the people that you are trying to influence or lead that, you know, you've got your stuff together mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're thinking about all of these elements. And it, and to me, I think that communicates a sense of, um, uh, relief for other people mm -hmm. in some way where they go, okay, I, I feel like I can relax in this person's office or maybe in our right. staff meeting or, you know, whatever we're doing, mm -hmm. it communicates, I'm prepared for you. I'm thinking about you. Mm -hmm. So this is not just like a peripheral thing that leaders need to be thinking about. It's mm -hmm. something where they are actually creating an environment because they're choosing how they want people to feel. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and so it's you, not a stumbling block to what they're trying, what their ultimate goal is. Right. To their message or to their vision yeah. or to whatever yeah. they're trying to communicate in that meeting. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I love that. You, you said something before we wrap this up that I thought was really interesting that if you're not n intuitively good at this, mm -hmm. um, you know, ask somebody who is talk a little bit about maybe how to find somebody like that in your life that could help give some guidance and perspective on creating an environment for you? Well, I think, <clears throat> first of all, any, anybody that has any kind of design, interior design, any, any of that experience, I think helps because they're, they're trained in that way to take in the surroundings and what does this look like? I mean, in very intentionally placed light and objects and everything for flow and regardless of whether it's a home or office or, or what ha or hospital or, you know, what, what have you, it's designed intentionally. So if somebody is trained in that, then, I mean, I think that helps a lot too. Also, like you can just Google, you yeah. know, how, what, how can I create a better environment? How can I make yeah. this more fun? And then I think that it, it doesn't need to be overwhelming because there's very practical tools. That's like, mm -hmm. okay, even if you may like really, you know, dark, you know, paint color, not the dark can be bad, but you know, if you, even if you don't see that or think that that's an issue, it, just having those practical tips and steps that you can follow will, will help. I love that. And to me, I, I think the word that we can finish on that you said just now is being intentional. Mm -hmm. 
being yeah. intentional, being yeah. intentional in terms of creating the environment that you want to live in, that you want to work in, that you want your team to experience. Mm -hmm. It's that intentionality that is able to further your message, right? right. I yeah. just love that. Yeah. Rebecca, thank you so much for your time. This is thank great. You. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah you've had a lot of experience with this. And uh, guys, I, I, I'm just so glad that you got to be a part of this. I, I feel like this message is something that we as leaders often overlook. But if we can, going back to Rebecca's word, be intentional about our environment that we're creating, I think we will be pleasantly surprised at the results that we will get from our team. So, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank and, uh, you. Yeah, awesome. And if you like this vid, please share it with your friends. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye.